HRDC grid, the criteria is obviously the car has to be eligible. We have a set of regulations and we will come out and see a car and help. If somebody's building a car, we'll make sure it's built properly from the word go. The criteria is that you've got to have a race license. You obviously have to pass the NARDS before that and get your race license. As long as the cars comply to our various regulations, that's all there is. Standing in front of one of these uh, very pretty A35s that uh, Julius has been instrumental in getting this race series going and talking to Richard Colborne from Westbourne Racing or Westbourne Rescue as many, many people will know. Um, this is one of your cars, not the only one of your cars here today, and both of your sons are here, both driving and both very keen drivers. Yeah, that's correct. That's, so the, uh, the A35s are what they first started doing uh, historic cars in uh, back in 2015 when we built some ready, ready for the uh, good revival when it was all A35s. And from there we kind of got the bug, progressed, and now we've got uh, properly about 15 cars we look after for, for various various people from, from uh, A35s, A40s, MG Midgets, lots of uh, British cars. So this is very much a, 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 a sideline, if you like, a hobby side of your business, which has suddenly turned into a, a race prep business. Yeah, it's supposed to be a, be a hobby. Um, we also race modern cars as, as, as well as part of the team. Uh, but this side of it was, was, was just, just supposed to be fun. But uh, as, as many things, it, uh, it steamrolls. And uh, yeah, now we've got lots of uh, customer cars to look after as well. So it's beginning to pay for itself or not? I don't think the motor racing ever, ever does. I think it's a, it's a labour of love. <laughs> I mean, this is the more affordable end of, of motorsport, but the affordable end of historics, certainly with the cars like this. But even these cars are now fetching quite a lot of money. Yeah, these are 835 Academy cars are fantastic value. Uh, you can buy one of those for well under twenty thousand pounds, which you know is, is considerably less than the, the, the build cost uh, of them, and they're, they're just great fun. Um, and it's uh, a single make racing. The cars are all very, very equal, so rewards good, good, good drivers. But uh, no, a really good entry level to historics. So the, I mean, these are cars are really carefully controlled, so that they're evenly matched when it gets out there. Yeah, they've got they've got a controlled engine, uh, the, the same gearbox and all the all the cars, uh, and the suspension components are are controlled as well. So you know, the cars are all very, very similar. So a good place to start if you can invest a little bit of time, a little bit of money and get yourself a license, you can do this. Yeah, they're not complicated to maintain either, you know, this, it's a good DIY mechanic can, can maintain one at home in the garage uh, and just it's, it's just a lot of fun, you know, lots of like-minded people all enjoying you know, classic cars and out there for the, for the weekend. The A35 Academy series was uh, one of my ambitions to bring in uh, an accessible uh, stepping stone into historic racing. The entry level into historic racing um, is quite high, so there was always a need for um, an easy access into historic racing, and we devised those cars to be uh, training cars to get people prepared for the different dynamics of a historic race car and it proved to be a great success. We keep very strict regulations. We don't want to see uh, cars being built at no expense um, therefore we try and keep a cap on the regulations but we have various levels so the academy really was a starter level a very basic racing car to learn the basics of uh, just driving and race craft um, but as you progress through the HRDC you get into some quite sophisticated cars well we've already said that uh, HRDC is is home to many and various cars. A lot of them are at the uh, more affordable end of motorsport. This is at the other extreme, I think. It's owner Guy Harmon, this is the Fraser Nash. It's absolutely drop-dead gorgeous and with an incredible history, Guy. Tell us a bit about the car. Well, it's a 1952 car. It was an Earl's Court motor car. A chap called Briggs Cunningham, like the look of it. Yeah. 
big collector, big racer, as we know, and thought I'd have that, so we shipped it back home and did Sebring 12 hour race the next year. So Team Carfield, Cunningham in 1953. And an incredibly successful racer as he was on the American sports car scene. And you know, if you're going to take a car like this to Sebring, it's a serious motor car. Uh, yeah, I, it didn't finish Sebring, unfortunately. I think it lost a half shaft or something, but uh, he was a guy who liked very pretty sports cars and uh, it took his fancy. So uh, yeah, it's a nice thing. How long have you owned it, Guy? Uh, I've had it about three years now, and we've gone through all the car with the company Classic Autos. Um, the wings weren't quite right on it when we got it, so we uh, put those right. And uh, yeah, got it out racing at Goodwood, so it's lovely. And uh, is it entered into the revival or the members meeting? Uh, we were lucky enough to do the revival last year at the Freddie March, which was great fun. And uh, we're also lucky enough to get a ticket for the members meeting, so we look forward to doing that. As usual, a very noisy pit lane at Goodwood, and one of the uh, typical cars, I guess, of this series, the Morris 1000, a very popular in motorsport. It's a particularly interesting story associated with it. But tell us a little bit about your ownership on the car first. Yeah, so this car, it's quite a famous car. So this was driven by a chap called Harry Ratcliffe from 1957 to 1961. And Harry was uh, my father's best friend. So my father was Jeff Goodliffe, and he and, he and Harry had a business for 40 years in motor racing. and. They both passed away now, unfortunately, so I have built this car in celebration of their lives. Uh, and the last time this car ran was in 1961. So the last time it ran was 61. So this, this is the first time today since so 1961. There's a lot of time and effort gone into getting this car, a, a memorial car and a fitting memorial to both of those gentlemen. Uh, and to get it here on the track date, will it be running in the rest of the series? It will run in the rest of the series, yes, so really looking forward to it, it's going to be great fun. Is, is HRDC, do you think, the right place for, for this sort of car, for this sort of testimonial? I think it's brilliant, yes, yeah, so a celebration of these cars is fantastic, so, and a great opportunity to race the car again, I think. Uh, no, I love it, I mean, it's uh, really enthusiastic about the whole thing. You've been playing with it out there today. Did I gather you had a little bit of a problem with the gearbox or something? Yeah, so it's a brand new gearbox. Um, we're, you know, we're experimenting with the gearbox a little bit. It was slipping out of third gear. Uh, it seems okay now. So just needed running in, I think. So now that we've passed that, it seems to be okay. So. Oh, the things that's quite noticeable, I think, about the HRDC is it's, it's very competitive out on the track, but everybody's helping each other in the paddock. So, you know, if you've got a problem with this car, there's going to be another one out there, and they might have solved your problem, so they can help. Absolutely. It's a very friendly atmosphere, and that's, I think that's why everybody comes. It's great fun. So. And, and very affordable. Yeah. <laughs> Motor racing is expensive at the best of times, but this is affordable uh, in relative terms. And uh, it's great to see these old cars out on the track again. Great fan of the HRDC, been with Julius many years. Uh, also a very proud sponsor of them with, with our company and our property. And uh, also lucky enough to have a Mark 1 Jag, which is fantastic fun. And everything about touring cars should be is in that car. So uh, great fun series, great, great camaraderie with all the racers and uh, just about the best fun racing you can have really. They are two very different cars. Very the different Mark 1 Jaguar to this, though. Slightly heavier, yes. I think. Slightly Just heavier. Like about three times. Yeah, or a bit more. But, uh, you know, they're still great fun things. Rear-wheel drive get some you know tail out action it's what it's all about and it's um, yeah they're just nice old British sports cars you come in on a restricted race license and to the historics and a lot of people just have national A's but you'll see a lot of our competitors either have international historic or C licenses so that level is very high and of course um, we've got some very experienced drivers here so some of them might not be professional but they are of a professional standard. Jonathan, a stalwart of the uh, HRDC uh, in a Mini Cooper S, pretty competitive in this one. Yeah, I, I sort of refuse to grow old, I'm afraid, and uh, I can still th throw it around quite quickly. When I get in a Formula Ford, I, uh, I suffer because of my weight and my age, but in a Mini, it's not so much as a hindrance because you're sliding most of the time, 
the quickest way to drive a Mini, especially around Goodwood, is, is with a slide most of the time because you can keep your foot on the gas. And uh, I've got this theory it costs just as much to go slow as it does to go flat out. This one, you've owned this one quite a long time, I think. You've obviously done a lot of work on it. I've looked after it for a long time since it was built. It actually belongs to my Dutch teammate, René de Vries, oh. who will be here for the race with his own car, which he's bringing up, well, his other car, which he's bringing over from Holland, but he very kindly lets me use his car. This is old technology, but it's affordable technology. It's old technology, but when someone said to me, they said, well, the engines are 1293, is it historic spec? It is, but it's about as historic as a digital watch. It's, it's, it's brought up to date. It's got a lot of nice components inside, mainly for reliability, and they, they have gained a little bit more power. But the good thing is, the way that they're doing this race is everybody is sealed. Um, they're checking the bore and stroke, then sealing the engines. So we all turn up, hopefully, for a level playing field. That's, that's exactly what we want to hear, that anybody can join in and anybody can then pitch themselves against the other drivers. But, but the equipment is broadly similar. Oh yeah, it's still, it's still a 1965 Mini Cooper S. I mean, some of the rules that Goodwood are insisting we adhere to, uh, like the track width from the rear, and uh, you know, gradually over the years we've all sneaked a little bit here and a little bit there, and I think a lot of us have had to put our cars back to where probably they should be. The interesting thing is, I mean, we watched you out there this morning coming down Lavent and into Woodcut, and, you know, you're clearly pushing the car quite hard. You're not babying it, but some of the minis out there are trying very hard as well, and it, it's, it's quite even competition. I think they take corners slightly different to me. You'll think you're going faster than a mini drives past you as if you're stationary, but uh, I haven't tried a mini yet. And again, slightly different to the Mark 1 as well. Everybody seems to have respect for each other's abilities. Absolutely, it doesn't matter what you bring, everyone's got the same ethos, they love old cars, and that's one of the great things about the HRTC. We run two track days at Goodwood every year, and that gives our members a chance to, as you say, shake down their cars and get their cars ready for the season. It's also a little bit of showcasing for Goodwood because a lot of our cars go to Goodwood for members meeting and the revival in September. So the revival is certainly supported by a great deal of HRDC members. We have a very strong membership and a lot of our members have more than one car, as you probably know. So uh, at our events, they're probably running in two or three races on, on a single meeting. James Colborn back in the A40, very, very quick this morning. I see you've got a little bit of a problem, but uh, the guys are going to get that sorted. You'll be out there again shortly? Yeah, no, it's just surely fettling to the front end, trying to find that a little bit more time on it, so it's nothing really repairs or anything. It's just changing a setup and seeing if we can get any more out of it, really. You were, you were very rapid out there this morning, clearly enjoying yourself. These uh, HRDC days are great fun, but you're clearly very competitive with this car. Yeah, no, we had a win last year at Brands Hatch in it um, on the Indy circuit. And that's the last time I really drove it was back in really July last year. So we were, um, again, we want to try and find some even more time to go even faster as you always do in this sport. It's uh, all about finding the limits and trying to find that bit more. But it is very much the, the fun end of historic motorsport and, and reasonably affordable. Oh, absolutely. The HRD would put fantastic meetings on all year round. Um, amazing family environment and if everyone involved they want to take part, it's open to everyone. Motorsport UK require you to go through a test that test will take place at any of the big major circuits where you have to go through a training process. It's a bit like taking your road driving test, but they want to see that you're competent with a race car. That doesn't mean to say you've got to have the fastest lap, but you've got to understand the rules and the regulations, the flag signals, and you're given a, a theory and a practical test. It's quite straightforward, but you must do that before you're allowed to take a restricted license. And then from the restricted license, you have to do a number of observed races. That means you have to finish in every race that you enter in order to upgrade to a standard license. So that's not about being faster. It's not about being a hot shoe with limitless amounts of money and perhaps an awful lot of talent. You've got to go out there and prove you're safe to be around other competitors. 
Absolutely, it's nothing to do with being a fast driver, it's quite the reverse, it's to see that you're competent and safe and that you're, you are comfortable on a racetrack with 30 other competitors in a race situation. This is an ethos that the HRDC rarely champion. We are very, very strict about driver discipline, and so we pride ourselves on the fact that we can run novices, uh, less experienced drivers, with very experienced drivers. Our experienced drivers know the novices with their restricted licenses will have um, a, a yellow square with a black cross on it, and they will give them plenty of room. So we have good driver discipline on the track. at various levels of course uh, subject to what you're driving but the idea is that it is you know camaraderie that's in the paddock goes through onto the circuit that doesn't mean to say that nobody's trying hard but they're trying hard and fair and that's an ethos that we really do support